Well, in many ways, Alistair, I think lots has changed, but not that much has changed here in Belfast. You're right in saying an historic weekend, the first time a nationalist party has managed to win the Assembly elections. They are the largest party, Sinn Féin, uh, now with 27 MLAs, that's members of the Legislative Assembly at Stormont. That is two ahead of the main unionist party, the DUP, who are on 25. The Alliance Party, that cross-community uh, group who say they're neither nationalist or unionist, they're the real winners, though of this election, more than doubling their seats uh, to 17. In saying that, as I said, it is all change, but it is also no change, because fundamentally, tomorrow morning, MLAs are going to go to Stormont here in Belfast, but in the end, are they going to be able to form a government? I think at, that, at this stage, that seems unlikely, Alistair. And the reason I say that is because the DUP seem pretty reticent to go back into government with Sinn Féin until they say the Northern Ireland Protocol, that Brexit deal that the UK signed up to with the EU a couple of years ago, until it is sorted, they fear and feel that it uh, divides the UK between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, that it is ne economically disadvantaging at Northern Ireland, that they want it either substantially changed or scrapped altogether. And frankly, they're refusing to do anything until the British government acts on that. Will the government do anything? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. They keep promising they're going to do something. They haven't thus far, and I suspect we may not see the Northern Irish executive up and running until that happens. Sure. Now, Arlene Foster uh, was, was saying on this programme earlier, and also when she was talking to our, our mutual friend Diana Davidson uh, and Paul Embry on, on their programme, Political Correction, that, that she did think there would be something in the Queen's speech, but she genuinely didn't know what at this juncture, because obviously she's not First Minister anymore, but she has her ear to the ground. I, I, I'm not quite sure that I can see what Boris Johnson's government can do by way of primary legislation in Westminster that's going to change much in what is essentially an international treaty and deal. Well, I think the British government have got kind of three options open to them. The one that they say they favour is trying, Alistair, I think, to negotiate with the European Union to try and get a deal, to try and say to the EU that they feel that the current protocol is undermining the Good Friday Agreement, is undermining consent in Northern Ireland, simply because most unionists don't agree with it and that it needs to be changed, even if that is not necessarily what the EU would like to see in regards to the single market. I think, second of all, they could trigger uh, Article 16. That would yeah. effectively suspend... Uh, the entire protocol, or they could do, and this is what's been suggested in the Queen's speech, we don't know what's going to happen or not, they could legislate uh, that there would be primary legislation in UK law that could override parts of the protocol. So rather than getting rid of it altogether, you would simply not apply all of it all of the time. In saying that, I'm pretty sure the EU would not like that, uh, and they may well uh, respond. And that's why this is really tricky in the end, because this is not just about Northern Ireland. This is about our relationships, about the UK's relationship with the EU post-Brexit.